Then uh, let me move on to uh, the next speaker. Next speaker is Professor Gu Cheng Yu from Chinese Academy of Science. He is an expert on spin orbit coupling related spin orbit torque effect and magnetic communes in room temperature magnetic multi layers for spintronics applications. Today, he is going to tell us about research progress of magnetic communes in thin film heterostructures. Professor Yu, please go ahead. Okay, so, uh, okay, so can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so let me start. Uh, okay, I can open my video. Uh, okay, so thanks for the introduction. I also want to thank uh, Sigua and all the organizers for the kind invitation to give me this priority opportunity to introduce our in recent uh, progress. So I'm Guo Qiang from uh, Institute of Physics, uh, China. So, and uh, it's uh, very nice to uh, give the presentation, uh, presentation after Zhadong because he has uh, given a uh, wonderful background introduction. So today uh, I'm going to talk about the scrumming in the thin film hydrostructures. So basically I will uh, talk about uh, uh, three parts. So first thing about um, material, and uh, I will uh, discuss how we can realize this elliptic scrumming and also uh, uh, sort of following uh, Jadong's uh, presentation, I will discuss the three-dimensional scrumming in the thin film. Uh, and the next I'm going to uh, talk about how we can create the scrumming uh, by using a focused X-ray or electron beam. And at the last, I will, uh, talk about our very recent uh, ex results about how we read the screaming using the MTJ. Okay, so uh, the reason uh, why we are interested in the in, uh, screaming is uh, uh, because of this background, you know, uh, uh, because the data uh, expands uh, quickly and uh, we do need to have uh, uh, storage with very high density. And currently in the data center, we use uh, uh, HDD for the data storage. And although it increased uh, uh, very fast in the past uh, 10 years, still, uh, we're still not satisfied. And that's the reason we need to develop a new technology and the scrumming is one good uh, opportunity for us. In the hard disk, so we use this uh, small area uh, with the magnetization uh, pointing up or pointing down to store uh, the information. And uh, if we want to further increase the density, we need to decrease the, the unit area. And here is about 10 by 30. And for a single scrumming, it could be very small. And in experiments, it could be uh, as small as two nanometers. So we can compare if we use this small area as an information carrier, so then we can uh, significantly, uh, significantly increase the density. Uh, so that's the reason we want to study this technology. And uh, uh, currently, uh, we are interested, uh, most of the people are interested in uh, two kinds of materials. So the first is the bulk material. Uh, they don't have just uh, talked about a lot about this uh, material. And we are interested in the thin film screaming materials. So the reason is uh, uh, this kind of material are very easy to be uh, grown on the semiconductor uh, wafers. So uh, we think it, it, it will be convenient for the device fabrication. Um, since the first uh, discovery of the thin film screamings at a low temperature, a uh, lot of progress uh, has been there. So at, in 2015, uh, our collaborators have uh, firstly uh, observed the room temperature screamings. And after that, many groups report the observation of the room temperature scrumings. So what we have done uh, is uh, one is that we have found that when we tune the perpendicular magnetic anisotropy, we can uh, find the phase with the stable uh, uh, room temperature scrumming. And based on this thin film materials, uh, we indeed uh, uh, fabricate this uh, uh, sort of restrict uh, memory. So in this uh, restrict, Scrumming can be uh, electrically created and uh, manipulated uh, here. So uh, ideally we can use it for the uh, information uh, uh, memory. So uh, from, from our group, we are interested in the device fabrication and uh, 
uh, for device fabrication, we need to have the good materials, which has a very small and stable skirming. And we also need to create the skirming uh, electrically, uh, electrically, eventually. So, and we also need to read the skirming uh, using uh, electro wave. So today I'm going to talk about these three parts. Uh, although there are many other uh, problems to be solved, so, and we also have some uh, solutions for these problems, but uh, I will not go into details about this part today. Okay, so for the material side, so uh, I will talk about the elliptic screaming first. So why we are interested in the uh, elliptic screaming? Uh, this is because, uh, you know, so there is a screaming Hall effect. So when we apply a uh, current, the screaming doesn't flow, uh, flow uh, 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 Along the current, it will uh, it will be deflected in the uh, transverse direction. So uh, we need to eliminate this uh, screaming hall effect, and by tuning the shape of the screaming, we can change the screaming hall angle. On the other hand, so changing the shape of the screaming it uh, uh, introduces some other interesting uh, physics, like the uh, interesting resonance mode. So in the bottom material. So people have realized this elliptic screaming by just uh, give a string to the substrate. You can see the shape can be changed from the circular uh, one to the elliptical, elliptic ones. And other simulations uh, 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 show that uh, elliptic screaming can also be uh, realized in the same film. So for example, like introducing this uh, uh, inputting anisotropy. So how we can do so we just grow the ferromagnetic layer by using this oblique angle deposition in our sputtering system. And because this oblique deposition, we break the symmetry. You can see the thickness from this side decrease continuously to the other side. And in this film, the strap domain is very interesting. It's just along the one certain direction here along the X axis. And when we apply an outplay magnet field and this strap domain is shrinked, uh, to a, a very short uh, elliptic uh, uh, stress and eventually become the elliptic uh, scrumming. Uh. So what's the reason we can realize the elliptic scrumming here? So we characterize the property of the film and find out there is a big imprint anisotropy for the magnetic anisotropy and also DMI. You can see the anisotropy in the film plane has 30, uh, about 50%. And, uh, if we put this anisotropy in the simulation, and you can see this anisotropy for both the magnetic anisotropy in the film plane uh, or the DMI anisotropy in the film plane can all can all can both introduce this elliptic scrumming. So that's probably the, the, the reason why we realize the elliptic scrumming. But why we have these two different uh, uh, anisotropy? So. Uh, that's the reason we uh, investigate the micro mag microscopic structure of the film uh, using the TM. When we look at the cross section of the sample uh, along, along the white, you can see there is nothing uh, very special. However, if we look at the cross section perpendicular to the white, we can see the very clear tilted polymer structures. So this is introduced by our oblique deposition. And because of this, and we also uh, studied the XRD of the film and found the shift a little bit of the resonant peak. That means there is a string in the out plane direction. So because a uh, string in the out plane, so it's very, uh, it's very obvious there should be an in plane string. And uh, based on this uh, two structure, we think it should be an peak in the film plane. And uh, we put this uh, string in the first principle calculation and find out uh, this uh, string can indeed introduce the anisotropy in DMI and the, uh, also the magnetic anisotropy. So uh, this experiment actually explain why we get the elliptic scrumming. Okay, so let me move to the next part. So in the elliptic scrumming film, we have a single uh, cobalt film, it's very thin. And it's very, uh, it's very safe to just assume we have a quasi-dimensional quasi two-dimensional uh, spin texture, meaning in the thickness direction, the spin is uh, identical. Uh, however, recently people are interested in this multi-layer 
because uh, the skimming in this kind of materials has, is, is, has a smaller diameter. So for example, can be from one micron to uh, 100 nanometer. So, but uh, in this kind of material, is this still a two-dimensional uh, spin temperature? That's a question we, we want to answer. So in order to compare the two samples, so we fabricate a, a single layer and the multi-layer uh, structures and uh, consistent with the previous uh, work. So the size of the skirmin is uh, reduced from one micron to about 100 nanometers. So and then uh, we consider uh, uh, if we could have the, if we can still assume it has a two-dimensional uh, spin texture. Actually, it's very easy to analyze it. Assuming we have the multi-layer and this is each layer, this is side view, we have the left side uh, magnetization pointing up, right side pointing down, and we can easily draw the um, magnetic flux uh, uh, based on this spin texture. So for the domo wall, in the domo wall, at the bottom, you can see the spin follows this uh, magnetic flux. It's uh, uh, okay. However, on the top, so the magnetization in the domo wall is against this flux. That meaning that means if or or flux is strong, or the DMI interaction is not strong. So the spin here will be reversed. And uh, this is exactly what we have seen in the simulation. So we, can, we have put the parameters of our materials in the simulator. And uh, you can see we got this complicated, complicated uh, spin texture in the multi-layer. This is uh, uh, similar to the previous work has been done this this paper. OK. So since we know there could be the, this uh, complicated three-dimensional spin textures, uh, the next question is, uh, is how can we detect it in experiment? And then we uh, follow our collaborators to do this uh, CD X-ray scattering uh, experiments. So I will not go into details about this technique. Basically, this technique can tell us what's the chirality of the uh, domain wall. So when we... Uh, have this X-ray incident angle a little bit small, and we get a domain pattern uh, blew up, and uh, uh, the, the pattern blew up and then ran down. It corresponds to the left-handed chirality. And uh, when we change the incident angle from smaller to the large, uh, and uh, you can see the pattern is reversed. The, the top become red and the bottom become blue. It corresponds to this right-handed chirality. Uh, Actually, this is uh, exactly what uh, we have seen in our simulation. So when we have the large incident angle, so basically the, because of the limitation of the penetration lens, we only detect the top few layers of the film and uh, it has a right-handed quality corresponding to this part. And when we uh, make the angle smaller, we detect a uh, thicker, uh, thicker part of the sample and we actually detect the bottom one. And this is the reason why the pattern uh, reversed. This is uh, uh, actually tell us we have the uh, three-dimensional uh, spin texture in our multi-layer. Okay, so for this film, actually each ferromagnetic layer is not uh, continuous to each other because we have some non-magnetic heavy metal and the insulator between uh, the two uh, accent uh, ferromagnetic layers. So the question is if we can still uh, see this uh, three-dimensional uh, spin texture in the continuous film in the sixth inspection. That's the reason we fabricated the cobalt carbon ferromagnet. It also has a, a perpendicular magnetic anisotropy. And in this film, again, we have the left uh, pointing up and the right pointing down, but the magnetic magnetism is continuous in the uh, sickness direction. So, and in this film, we also see this kind of uh, uh, reverse of the uh, pattern. And uh, that's showing in this film, we also have the three dimensional uh, uh, structures. But uh, in this film, we have a very interesting uh, thing to, to see. So, for the reversal of the chirality in the domain, so in the domain wall, you can see the pointing right uh, to the bottom, pointing left. There must be a cross point. So in the middle, and at this point, the magnetization uh, can pointing in or pointing out. So they are equivalent in energy. Uh, so if we look at the three-dimensional case, uh, it's like this. And uh, 
And first of all, at the boundary between the two cases, there is a singularity. This is a, 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 like a, a, like the, the thing has been mentioned in this morning by Professor Li. Uh, this uh, singularity is actually an uh, emergent magnetic monopole or a termized, uh, or termized block point. So because it's the uh, emergent field is uh, like a monopole. And how we can uh, see this in experiment? So actually we can easily find it uh, using the Lorentz PN. So at this certain point, you can see uh, here, we have a reverse of the contrast and this bond actually, uh, it corresponds to this emergent uh, um, monopole. So because we know it has a three dimensional uh, structure in the sixth direction, that's the reason we can just uh, view it as a, a broad point in this two dimensional case. Uh, and if we consider the anti-parallel anti uh, configuration of the cobalt and the turbine, so actually we've got a, a monopole and the anti-monopole, uh, they are overlapped. Okay, so in the previous two things I have just mentioned, we realized that the depth field actually is very important even in this uh, very thin, uh, thin field. So, then we, we, we designed to uh, utilize this uh, magnetic, uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, dipole field. So previously, like uh, uh, observed by uh, Haifeng in uh, bulk material, they realized this the chiral bubble. So, but the chiral bubble is not very stable uh, because uh, uh, it's more easy to disappear. Uh, so we, uh, in order to have a stable bubble, we put the mountain layer, uh, like the one we have just talked about, on the bulk material. And uh, when we have a skimming phase, this every skimming can generate a, a local dipole field. And this local dipole field can help to stabilize this uh, carrier bubble. And uh, since we have a skimming lattice and we can realize this uh, uh, bubble lattice. So uh, this is how we can utilize this dipole field. Okay, so uh, after we have the material, we have to think about how we can create the skimmings. So, uh, next, I will uh, discuss how we can uh, realize our schemes uh, by using X-ray and uh, uh, focused electron beam. And then this kind of creation is, is based on this exchange bars the material. Uh, so in this exchange bars the scheming material, we have the anti ferromagnetic layer uh, providing an exchange bars in the outer plane uh, direction. So this exchange bars can replace the required uh, magnetic field for, stab for stabilizing the uh, skirmings. So in this mountain layer, we can see we have the uh, outer plane exchange bars. And for the as grown sample, we can see it shows uh, this wonderful um, labyrinthine domain. It's very general. And in, uh, since we have exchange bars, so we know that. So the exchange bars is just a random, randomly distributed. Uh, uh, we find a very interesting thing like this. When we apply a field large enough to saturate the magnetization, and we use the focus X ray to scan the central part of the sample. And after we remove the field and X ray, we image it again and we found the previously scanned area becomes a single domain. That means the exchange bars becomes uniform from the random one to this one. So after the scanning. And when we reverse the magnetic field, and we can see the exchange bars is also reversed because a single demand becomes uh, opposite. That's very, very interesting. That means the X ray can somehow affect the anti ferromagnetic order. So, uh, how we can understand the, 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 the reason we disturbed the anti ferromagnetic order? So, this is the picture we are, we are now believe. So, it's when we scan the anti ferromagnetic layer. And the excitation of the electron from two from the two uh, p to three d uh, cause the distribution of the electron in the magnets p orbital, and it somehow affect influence the magnetic anisotropy or the or the uh, restriction of the anti ferromagnetic order. So, and in that case, when we have a, a magnetization uh, next to the anti ferromagnetic Magnetic layer uh, in other direction and can can be changed. So 
so in order to prove that, we also change the energy of the photon. And uh, you, you can see when the excitation is maximum at the magnet's edge, and this effect is also enhanced. That be let us to believe uh, this is because of the uh, electron excitation. However, we have to simply uh, uh, exclude the possibility from the thermal effect, and we estimated the thermal effect by using the uh, console. And we can see the temperature increase is actually uh, very very small. It's, uh, it's only 0.2 Kelvin. And then we also carry out these experiments at the low temperature, and this can be still uh, seen in low temperature, that uh, even at uh, about 100 K, that make us to believe this is the, basically is the not thermal effect. So how we can use this effect? Because we have the very high solar resolution of the uh, uh, system, uh, the Fox uh, uh, X-ray, we can use this technique to manipulate the magnetization very locally. And for example, we can um, make this IOP uh, logo, and also we can create a single domain background. And also to add this in this background, we can create a single squirming, or we can uh, create a squirming lattice with different uh, configuration. Okay, we think this, the importance of this work is that, so since the synchrotron radiation source has been uh, widely used for the magnetism detection, however, it has been rarely used for manipulation. And this is probably one work can let us know we can use it also for the manipulation. So the advantage is the, it's high resolution, but the disadvantage is the resource is quite limited and also the efficiency is low. That's the reason we need to find another way to create the scrumming. So, so if we look at from the resolution point of view, we if we because the resolution is uh, proportional to the uh, wavelength. So we need to reduce the wavelength. For example, uh, previously people have used the laser to create the uh, group of the scrumming because a lot of the wavelengths, they cannot create a single scrumming. But in all these experiments, we use a, a short wavelengths. Uh, we can create a very small uh, scrumming. So if we follow this trend, uh, it's easy to think about how if we can use a focused electron beam to create scrumming because the wavelength is even smaller. So that's given us a, a higher resolution. And we put our sample to, into the Lorentz TM because uh, Lorentz TM can also provide the focused electron beam and also can image uh, the, the sample. Uh, so in this sample, we also use a magnetic field to separate the sample and also use the electron beam to illuminate this area. So luckily we found out the electron beam can also affect this exchange bars. And we first created this single background, and then we used the focus electron beam to just uh, shot this every single point, and we, we can uh, successfully uh, create this single scrumming. And the scrumming shape is also related to the spot size. When we increase the diameter of the spot, and you can see it is evolved, uh, evolves from the single point to the multi-domain. OK. But different from the X3, so we think the uh, focus of the electron beam is probably due to the uh, thermal effect because uh, people have studied a lot about the temperature increase uh, caused by the electron beam. So this is the probably the main uh, reason for the creation of the scrumming. Okay, um, to now we have successfully from uh, uh, transfer from the synchrotron to the Lawrence TM for doing this experiments. But however, there is still some disadvantage for using Lawrence TM. The most important thing is it's not efficient. And also the substrate, uh, you have to be specific substrate to make the electron trans uh, uh, can pass through the substrate. Uh, so that's the reason we need to find a, a, a better uh, method. So that's the reason we started to using the ele electron beam lithography. So this technique uh, still pro provide a very high resolution electron beam, and it has a, a very uh, strong powerful to pattern the sample. And also it, the substrate can be random, for example, like the silicon oxide. So luckily in, uh, for using this technique, we can still pattern the scrumming uh, just uh, using this pattern a function, it's very quick and fast, 
and efficient. We can patent different uh, programming uh, lattice, and also we can patent this uh, just uh, not uniform uh, uh, scrumming like, like we want. So, and this kind of lattice uh, can be used for the magnum uh, at state study in the future, I think. Okay, so how many minutes I have? Probably <laughs> I'm running out of uh, time. Uh, please stop me if I'm too late, sorry. So how we can you, you, this? Yeah, you have a uh, kind of uh, 15 minutes left. Okay, okay, 15. Okay, 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 <laughs> thank you. So I, I can slow down a little bit. Um, Okay, how we can utilize uh, this technique? So this is uh, uh, one example, oh, sorry for the Chinese, I didn't, uh, I forgot to change it. Uh, so one possible, one possibility is to config, uh, to construct a very special uh, device. So since we can manipulate the converse uh, locally, so then we can construct this kind of domain wall by making the converse left pointing down and converse on the right pointing up. Then we can make the magnetization pointing, uh, pointing down and the right side pointing up. And then we can uh, artificially configure this uh, domain wall. And this domain wall, domain wall can be used as the, the device boundary. So initially we usually just etched out the material and to form this physical uh, boundary. But here we can use domain wall the, as the boundary and to confine the screaming motion. And in our simulation, we found there's many, uh, there are many advantages. Sorry. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay, this is advantage one and the two, sorry. So the first one is uh, the screaming moving uh, next to the domain wall can be, the speed can be uh, increased. And also uh, because the domain wall, so we can just uh, increase the critical uh, driving current. So for the physical boundary, screaming is easy to, uh, to be destroyed at the boundary. However, when we use the wall, we can uh, increase this critical current. That can eventually increase the velocity of the uh, screaming. On the other hand, we can also create a certain uh, pinning center at the side, at, in the middle of the channel. So by uh, introducing this in-plane in exchange bars, and it causes uh, uh, Energy, and energy value and to make the scrumming stable at this point. You can see then we can move the scrumming very steadily uh, at diff between different sides. On the other hand, we can also uh, manipulate the exchange bars just under the reading, uh, uh, reading MTJ. Uh, as we know, when the scrumming is very small, it's very easy, very difficult to detect it. But if we make the exchange bars, uh, opposite uh, and anti parallel to the background. And when the screaming go into this area, it can be, uh, it can be uh, enlarged. And then we can actually increase the signal of the electrical uh, signal. So, uh, okay. This is a, a application for the memory. We, we can also uh, try to design a device for the logic uh, application. So for example, we create a four pinning signs uh, in this area, and uh, on top is MTG for reading. And if we have two input, uh, we can uh, drive the screaming motion. And uh, here we consider the screaming hall effect as, uh, as well. Uh, and also works uh, if the screaming hall uh, angle is very small or even zero. So I will not talk about too much details. But uh, this is just the example how we can uh, realize this uh, XOR uh, function. So this is a basic logic uh, function. And we put uh, two screaming initially at this point. And when we have the uh, put one, uh, one put zero and the second input uh, is one, we can move the screaming in this way. It uh, eventually go, go to the reading spot. And if we change the input, and this one, there is no scumming. So that means we have this, we, we realize this like for uh, uh, function. So uh, similarly, actually using this device, we can uh, realize the 16 modeling uh, logic uh, function. This is a complete logic function. Okay, so uh, I have talked about, about the, talk, talk about this uh, material and the creation. So at last I will, uh, 
uh, talk about a little bit about how we read the schemes. So for uh, realize this complete uh, schemic device, we have to have the electrical reading method. So, and the MTG is of course the best way because the MTG is uh, uh, right now is the best uh, method for converting the magnetic signal to the uh, electrical signal. However, this is a problem. For using MTG, basically we are still limited to only cobalt boron or cobalt iron, something like this. So if you're using other, uh, if you are using other magnetic materials, the TMR will be very low or very hard to be increased. That's the reason in the pronounced uh, electronic device, people always use cobalt and boron or cobalt iron. So and to, today, so the largest the TMR ha has been uh, 1600 uh, percent uh, in the such kind of materials. So however, so there is a conflict. So for the material, we have very uh, uh, broad, uh, various uh, skirming materials. So you can see from the bulk to the thin film. Uh, so uh, people have developed the, the skirming materials for many years. So not all this kind of materials can be used in, uh, for skirming rating using MTJ. So this is a problem. So then we found a way to solve this problem. Okay, so the, so the, the idea is we still use the cobalt boron, MGO cobalt boron as the MTJ for rating. And we put the skirming uh, media, uh, either the bulk or the layer and uh, can couple this uh, skirming through a spacer with a, a free layer of the MTJ. So uh, for example, I give an example. So here we have the MTG, cobalt boron, MGO, and cobalt boron. And on top, we put a very thin tantalum. And then we put the skirming layer, a typical thin film skirming layer. If the platinum, cobalt, the, and the tantalum, we can also change it to other materials, of course. So, and this materials with, will be magnetically coupled to the free layer. So this is a, basically uh, uh, the sample structure of the thin film. And you can see uh, uh, there is a gradual uh, switching of the skimming layer. So here, and we also uh, image this uh, skimming layer by using Lorentz TM. You can see that it uh, evaluates from the uh, Leibniz domain to the skimming phase and to the single domain. So, but how how can we know if the free layer is uh, necessarily coupled to the skimming layer? So we can actually uh, know it based on the uh, 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 resistance measurement because the resistance, the, the TMR actually, the resistance is uh, uh, only sensitive to the free layer, uh, not to the schema layer. So this is a, a typical MTJ without the schema layer. You can see uh, the free layer has a very low coercivity. However, when we couple it to the schema layer, and you can see the failure becomes very different. And basically it follows the skirming layer properties. That, that, allows, the, that, that allow, let us know uh, that the, the failure is nicely coupled to the skirming layer. And in the simulation, it also tells us like this. So this is the, 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 from here to here is a, a skirming layer and the very bottom is a cobalt boron layer. And we can see so using the uh, suitable parameters, we know that the skirmilla can be nicely print, imprinted into the cobalt boron layer. So th that means that all the spin texture in the skimming layer can be uh, coupled to the free layer. So, and this is a, a magnetic tunnel junction we have fabricated. And uh, before measuring the resistance, and we also image it just using MFM. You can see basically in this uh, uh, MTJ, the domain pattern also evolves from the Leibniz domain to the skirming and to the uh, single domain. It's, this is a, a quite like the Lorentz TM image. So, okay, this is the most important part for, the, uh, for this uh, second, the third part. So basically we do the simultaneous uh, measurement of the MFM and also the resistance measurement. So MFM show us the Leibniz domain change to the skirming phase and also change to single domain. And we can also reduce the field from this point 
to the uh, leprosy domain again and to the squamous, basically the corresponds to the one, two, three, and come, come back. So basically, in, in order to compare the squamous state and a single domain uh, case, we use the same field to have a squamous phase and a single domain. So to em eliminate other factors. So by compare, so the, 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 the B and the D, you, you can see for the for the parallel state, so the single domain case, the resistance is here, and for the starting uh, screaming, so we have increased uh, uh, resistance. So if we calculate uh, the difference of the resistance, and we can calculate the resistance for single screaming, this is uh, thirty eight. We have uh, we have also cal cal calculated the screaming for the F case. And the uh, the resistance for each screen is 66. Basically, they are in the same range. And uh, in principle, we can also just uh, calculate the uh, resistance for screen based on its size. Because when we have this image, we know the size of the screen, we know the size of the MPJ, we also know the TMR of this junction, and we can calculate uh, the resistance. It should be uh, in principle. And we calculated it to be uh, 29. This is the reasonably close to the, the experimental result. So that means uh, if we have single screaming, we have the 29 resistance change. So this is uh, actually a big change. So uh, enough for the uh, screaming rating. OK, so let me give a quick summary for my talk. So at the first part, I have to talk about the material point. So uh, we realized this elliptic scrumming by just uh, introduced this in-plane anisotropy in DMI and magnetic anisotropy as well. So this is because uh, oblique separation caused by the uh, Spartan system. And also we studied this uh, multi-layer scrumming and uh, proved that in this kind of uh, multi-layer, the scrumming is not a quasi two-dimensional spin texture. It has this complicated spin texture uh, in 3D. And also in the conti continuous uh, cobalt plumbing film, we also uh, proved it also have the three dimensional uh, spin texture. And uh, we uh, uh, successfully demonstrated there is a singularity, uh, a magnetic, uh, emergent magnetic monopole uh, inside. And you, uh, this, these two works tell us the dipole field is actually very important uh, for uh, spin texture. So we also utilize the local uh, dipole field caused by the scrumming. To, uh, to realize this uh, bobber latex. Uh, and in the second part, I, uh, I show that we can create the single scrumming by using the Fox uh, uh, X-ray or Fox electron beam. And uh, this technique can be used for uh, realize this kind of uh, very special uh, memory and logic device. And at last, I show that we have successfully detected the scrumming using the TMR. We think this is a very uh, important piece for device application. And last, I want to thank uh, many collaborators. With their help, we can achieve this uh, uh, experiment. And uh, also, thank you for your listening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yu. So, uh, any questions from our audience? So Professor Yu, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So you are saying is X-ray or E-beam can generate or create the scumions, right? Yeah. Yeah. In the case, uh, can you also uh, control the delete of scumions by E-beam or X-ray? You mean delete, right? Yeah, delete, yeah. Okay. If you can create, also you can, you should <laughs> delete that one, right? You know, to control, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, indeed, yes, but uh, one thing I have to point, it, uh, point out. So for uh, changing the extreme bars, somehow we need the assistance of the external magnetic field, meaning we need to apply a field to align the magnetization. And uh, uh, so for example, if here is a random, we, put, uh, we make the cobalt aligned in the positive direction and we uh, scan this uh, central area, we can make all the extreme bars pointing up. So that means uh, when we want to eliminate the screaming, 
we also need to use in uh, external field. So they, they, this is a bad thing for the creation. However, uh, here, so when we create this uh, single domain, a uh, single screen using X3 or Electron Beam, uh, we, 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 actually, uh, at, uh, we actually realize this uh, at a zero field. That's because the depth of field favor to reverse uh, a scanned part. So th that means when we create it, we can do it at a zero field. And when we want to uh, eliminate it, we need to delete it. We need to use the field. So, the... so basically, you can do that. Yes. I see. OK, uh, yeah, we have a, a question from uh, Professor Chang. Please go ahead. Yeah, Guo Chang, uh, very beautiful work. Uh, could you go to page 18, if I remember correctly, you mentioned the, the, the image of uh, blog point. Uh, yeah, could you advise a little bit more detail how, how it was done? Maybe a uh, 19, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Lawrence TM or uh, X-ray? Uh, okay, so uh, actually for this experiment, we have used uh, uh, three different techniques, basically. So the first one is the uh, uh, stick sum. This is the X-ray technique. X-ray technique tell us the cobalt is anti-parallelly, uh, anti-ferromagnetically anti coupled to the turbine. So th this is actually well known. This is a ferry magnet. It's natural. So and the second uh, technique we use the CD racks. This is a scattering technique. It basically tells us. The domain wall have this uh, spin, a uh, three-dimensional spin texture. So this is this is this is the mi missing important information for using the imaging uh, technique because the tech, uh, imaging technique only tell us about the average two-dimensional uh, uh, information. The the this is a scattering scattering technique tell us uh, there is a three-dimensional uh, uh, maybe maybe this one is a, there is a three-dimensional uh, spin texture here. And uh, Lawrence TM tell us there is a uh, there is a spin antiparallel uh, in this line because it, it sees the information in the domain 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 wall. That's the reason based on this three technique we know there is a singularity at this point. So Lawrence TM that. doesn't give you the information away from the 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 the, the block point right due to this new configuration. Uh, sorry uh, about what? Sorry, I didn't. So, so L Lawrence TM doesn't have contrast uh, from the, the 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 magnetization away from the mod from the the monopole, right? Uh, because they're mainly neotype wall and doesn't give any contrast on the Lawrence. Okay, so basically you, you can see here. So if uh, if you uh, it's a little bit small, but if you let me give you a. Uh, so if you look at here, this uh, bright top and uh, dark down, right? And uh, this uh, contrast reverse to the for the right side. Is mm -hmm. uh, top is black, down is white. That means uh, the, the the spin in the domain wall pointing to different direction. So here, so like uh, this, this is exactly the uh, the spin texture mm -hmm. for this uh, square. Mm -hmm. So that means. There is a certain point inside, and we also know there is a three-dimensional in this cross section, uh, of course, perpendicular. Oh, I see. I see. So th th that's the reason we can confidently say that there is a block point somewhere uh, in this uh, very mm -hmm. little area. I mm -hmm. see. Are there any image of its dynamics? Um, no, actually, uh, this kind of uh, block uh, we call it the uh, emergent magnetic monopole. It's a random a uh, uh, exist in this area you can see here or here so we can find it somewhere and uh, we are thinking to control it control the creation of this monopole and uh, yeah dynamics will be very interesting that's actually has been yeah. discussed this, this morning by professor Lee in his talk it's very yeah yeah sequel will also be interesting in, in, in that yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it's definitely interesting to do also using current to drive it motion something uh, I think it'll be very, very interesting. Mm. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Nice work. Mm, thank you. Uh, okay. So, uh, any questions? 
Actually, I have one more question. So in your uh, third part, you show the MFM images uh, showing the domains uh, changes from liberals to uh, scumians and polarize, something like that. Can you uh, show, show me that images? Yeah, uh, this one. Oh, the previous one. This one. Oh, what are, yeah, this one, yeah. So uh, what I'm interested in is uh, at your field, you have a reverence, then you have a common phase uh, with increasing a magnetic field, then polarized, right, at T. Then when you decrease field, uh, it shows uh, uh, reverence uh, domains. But before uh, polarize, you have a scumian domain. So uh, by the symmetry, you should have uh, some, something like scumians when you decrease as well. They, but it seems like you have uh, some kind of uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. something or symmetry shows here. So what yeah, happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. This it's, is uh, irreversible right now. Uh, OK, so, uh, so, so if, you, if you look at the magnetic hysteresis, uh, uh, maybe this is easier to see. Actually, this curve, uh, since the reference layer, uh, uh, the magnetic direction doesn't change. So this uh, reflects the uh, free layer uh, magnetic change. You can see the follow the right curve, it uh, goes down and the saturate, and we come back. Actually, there is a difference. So it doesn't just go back, uh, follow the first loop. There is some hist hysteresis loop. So it keeps single domain in this uh, in this area and uh, jump to the liberation domain directly. There's no screaming face when we uh, reduce the field from a maximum saturation point to the uh, or decrease it when we decrease it. Uh, so okay, so uh, yeah, it, yeah, it, there's a irreversibility uh, in the hysteresis. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's okay, actually, I see. A, uh, that's a good point for us because then we can compare this point and this point at the same field. So mm -hmm. the, at the same field, we can either have a screaming phase or we have, have a single domain phase. Then we can just direct compare. That's the reason we compare uh, the C and uh, B and D for resistance. So then we can extract the screaming uh, resistance very accurately. Okay, thank you for the explanations. So since time's up, uh, let me conclude these sessions. Uh, thanks to the speaker again, Professor Yu. Thank you.